it's worth knowing, right? It's just like, this is a thing that brands care about or platforms might care about a little more. And just knowing that, that if that's a big part of your content, that might impact um, your success a little bit on certain areas. YouTube is working to get more videos monetized using their green, yellow, red, and gray system. Green icon means your video is eligible to earn full revenue. Yellow, your video will display limited or no ads. Red, your video is ineligible to be monetized, and gray means you manually turned off monetization. As of today, videos that contain adult themes delivered through the context of humor will now be marked as yellow or green. And videos using moderate profanity within the first 30 seconds have been moved to green monetization. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Do I have to make my content family friendly if I want to make money on YouTube? Are there other platforms where I can not be family friendly and still monetize well? It's interesting, right? Because if you do have no ad revenue, then you you can be concerned of like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to make any money off of this. But there's also something to be said about just the reach that you can get in terms of a platform's algorithm working for you at reaching people because maybe it's inflammatory or whatever. And you do get a whole bun bunch of views. You can build an audience off of that, monetize in other ways, even if it's through sponsorships or Patreon or the... YouTube even having like the join system. A lot of times people will even just support a page if it's not maybe family friendly to get additional benefits. People even go to shows, buy tickets to shows because uh, that's where they can create content that doesn't have a filter behind it. So I think there's still going to be a big presence for both of it. I think YouTube ad revenue is still going to be obviously a massive component for creators. And if there are ways to censor it that doesn't take away from what you are trying to deliver, then I think it could be very valuable. Or if you can reduce profanity in order to maximize your revenue, then full power to you. A lot of creators, even looking at some of the biggest Twitch streamers like Summit, if you look at his actual videos that he posts, all of the profanities filtered out on it through being muted or a beep sound or something over that. And that's to just, you know, it doesn't really, at least in certain moments, doesn't add to the context of it. Might as well keep it green, keep it moving, and, and get a little bit more ad revenue off it. I mean, it's a choice, right? Um, it, you you have a choice as a creator, which is cool. You obviously have to adhere to the terms of service, right? Like you cannot yeah, go over, over the, the line and, and break terms of service. But within those bounds, um, you know, profanity is a part of some people's content. But you can't. I, one thing I would encourage you is not just if not blaming the platform or the brands for not wanting to work with you if you are that more edgy or more kind of out there um, because they're concerned about you know their own brand and and they're uh, like associating their name with something that might be a little more edgy so if you're not looking to like get sponsorship dollars or things like that then you know you can be a little more edgy and out there and there's plenty of other ways to monetize which is actually really cool yeah. for someone who when your content's about that whether it's through merch or you know subs or um directs like donations and things like that there is definitely more options for for revenue so it doesn't have to depend on ad revenue or have to depend on um you know sp sponsorships or brands so i think just keeping when you're when you're doing that and you're making that conscious choice with your content know that there will be some sensitivity from brands that will be like eh, i'm not so sure about this this is a little edgy for me and and keep that in mind i don't think you have to be uh, family friendly i think it is safer um, but you don't have to be it to succeed. The thing that could be beneficial with it too, just to consider is that, you know, oftentimes you can reach a much broader audience by keeping it more family friendly, right? There's a lot more people that you then open the content up to besides even just ad revenue side for it. Uh, but that being said, just because you're also reaching a bigger audience and there's more potential there doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate to you know, more people watching. A lot of times you going, talking about niche, right? The more specific that you can get into a niche, sometimes that's where you can get even more traction, especially very early on. It's better to target something more specialized than, you know, just going after a very broad thing where there might be massive, massive more competition that you maybe can't keep up with to whatever degree uh, that it can be. And I think it's a little different for streaming too, because I don't think there's quite as many flags in real time systems where, you know, if you're streaming and swearing, then it kind of is more up to the algorithm on catching some of those things that can also be a little bit more delayed. Even with music, that's something that there is to a certain extent already built in on Facebook, uh, or at least music as well as on YouTube. 
Twitch actually recently just had a post uh, or an email that I had saw from them. They've continually been making improvements to their DMCA system to try and avoid uh, music issues, but they don't really have anything filtering out per se, anything at least that's not in terms of service violations filtering anything. But that could be something to at least consider going down in the future, just like how we had you know, this whole entire DMCA issue that's been on Twitch with music getting shut down and, and censoring and putting advertisers into certain categories and everything. That was something YouTube created a system for years ago. Facebook created a system for years ago, and now it's just coming across the board to it. So this is something that I think even consider like, okay, well, there's nothing really, I mean, you can kind of say you're 18 plus or whatever it is and, and, and help guide it to a degree. But to my knowledge, there's no automated algorithm type system or thing that's reviewing the content to put you into a green, yellow, or red category to make sure that the advertisers and the monetization works for all of that as well. Uh, and obviously, Twitch is a little bit behind on how some of the ads and things are integrated in the first place. So maybe it's not a concern right now, but it's just something to, you know, just keep in mind for the years to come as well as their content yeah. develops. I'm seeing chat. I mean, there's got a lot of folks on, on Twitch chat right now. They're saying, like, I curse like a sailor. If I bleep out my profanity, half my videos might be a bleep. Um, <laughs> and that's, it's, it's just good. It's worth knowing, right? It's just like this is a thing that brands care about or platforms might care about a little more. And just knowing that that's, if that's a big part of your content, that might impact um, your success a little bit on certain areas. Um, it's not I mean there's plenty of people that do curse. It's not like you yeah. can't. Just um, be mindful of that. Too. I think the point here that um, someone was saying in chat is, is yeah, Respawn Please says, I curse like a sailor, but I'm never mad when people don't want to collaborate with me because I know that that can be off-putting um, for their content if I'm cursing all the time. So and I think it's just keeping that in mind as you, whether you network or work with brands, that you, you want to be mindful of that. And it's good to know, right? Like you even having that understanding of it, it's just like that's something that's up good to be upfront about people with, especially if you are going to be collaborating or doing anything with them or uh, anything. And it's just something you don't really consciously think about. It's the same thing with monetization with you know, having music in your videos, how many creators for years had been uploading content, just putting it in the comments. This isn't my music. Uh, we're okay. It's not my music. I'm just telling everybody. Uh, yeah, well, that doesn't really cut it. You're still not going to get any ad. Like it's still going to affect you. And years later, their videos still are all claimed. Even if they got a million views off it, they cannot benefit from that. And they'd had no idea even in the first place. So just at least being conscious of it and, and knowing some of these things, I think, is at least helpful because otherwise, years from now, you could be like, ah, if I would have just known that, and you just don't make that recognition sometimes. 